Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you guys uh, are had a great Christmas and New Year. We are now into 2022, and uh, we have got a brand new project. This is going to be at least two videos, maybe more. It kind of depends on how it goes. But I wanted to uh, start on this. We are right now. We're in Arizona, but we're on our way to California. Um, and we're going to do part of this here. We're going to do the layout here and I'm going to start the carving, uh, over in Arizona in Ryan's shop. So, but anyway, what I want to do here is, um, kind of just preface this, tell you how this came about, uh, down, uh, in Phoenix on Halloween, uh, the Halloween weekend in 2021, we did a couple demos at Woodworkers Source and uh, had a great time. It was a great success. Met some of you down there, and uh, we want to be doing that again. We want to be doing that a lot more this year in 2022. But while we were down there, we were talking to Corey, who is uh, the marketing guy down there, and he commissioned us to make some signs for him for their three stores. They've got uh, two stores in Phoenix and one in Tucson. And this is what their logo looks like, if you guys aren't familiar. Um, that help? Yep. So this is what their logo looks like, if you're not familiar with it. It's really a cool logo, and he wanted me to make some signs for the inside of the stores with their logo on it. And the neat thing is, they knew where I could get some wood. Um, so uh, I picked up some wood. We're making three signs, but I'm just going to do one of them on camera here. And uh, they wanted it out of eight quarter maple. So uh, I have put together the boards, actually all three of the boards. This is one of them. This is the one that I'll do on camera. Uh, put together the boards, milled them down, and got them pretty much ready to go. Uh, however, I realized I made the boards actually uh, rough glued up the boards uh, through two or three weeks ago and I real and I found out that uh, I don't know what exactly what it was, but this one developed a split. Let me uh, uh, I don't know the best way to show this. but if you look right there, don't move. you can see a split. but uh, what I did was I went ahead and filled it. So I used the Starbond medium because it wasn't a real big gap and uh, the accelerator and this stuff, you guys know, I do a lot of fills with this stuff. Uh, if it's small cracks like that or small knots, uh, it works absolutely perfect for me. So even on the edge, you can see that it split uh, through to the edge as, as well as on uh, the back side. but it's now completely sealed up. What? Oh, I messed oh, I that. I zoomed in just as you took it down. I'm so. sorry. Um, anyway, so the board is pretty much ready to go. We are going to start the layout process on it. So stick with us and we'll come right back. All right, so that's their, uh, their artwork. Now, what we did, and we've done this on videos in the past, but it's been a while. So there's a lot of new people watching us these days. I wanted to do an up, updated version of our, tramp, our transfer method. So we used a, a website called rapidresizer.com. And what it allows you to do is upload whatever artwork you have and make it as big as you want. Now we kept this in exactly the same proportion as this. But if we wanted to squeeze this or make it taller or whatever out of proportion, Rapid Resizer definitely does that it's uh, an invaluable tool for us and it just prints it on the tiles so. yeah and then you can just print it out on eight and a half by eleven tiles now these I have trimmed down because I wanted to uh, you know I put them on my paper cutter and trimmed them down so and then I cut the margin off of some of them cut the margin off of here off of there and off of this one two different margins I cut off because I want them overlapping now I've got a couple different ways I can do this. The last few times I've done it, I've used just, you know, just scotch tape. But um, I realized that I started using this stuff a while back. This, um, it, it's like a roll-on adhesive, and it works really well. So I'm going to attempt to, uh, to do that right now. It just goes on clear. Clear. 
I don't know, you probably can't see that, but... So that's there. Now I'm going to put some adhesive on this one. Oh, got to turn it over. I was trying to roll the wrong way. So what it does is it just adheres some two-sided adhesive on there, two-sided tape. Now I'm going to try and put this in place. That's pretty good. Now we got one more piece. And this stuff is, um, by the way, I think we have this in our Amazon store too. Yeah, we've got a little gap there, but I don't think that'll matter too much. It'll, this is, uh, by the way, guys, this isn't my original, or this isn't my final artwork. I am only putting this together because I want to use this as a, uh, as registration for where my, my real artwork is going to go. You'll understand here in a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is, um, measure I'm going to center that so it's about two and an eighth From there top to bottom let's see where we're at that's three and a half that's three so we need to come down about a quarter of an inch about a quarter of an inch that's about right so now what I have to do is just make sure that it's nice and square. So um, I'll, I've got to go get a tool. I'll be right back. I want to make sure that this is square to the board. Be right back. Okay, guys. So what I want to make sure, I want to make sure that my, my lettering isn't cockeyed. So the way that I do this, there might be a better way to do it, is I draw a line on my layout. Again, this is my mock-up. This won't be my, my uh, final layout. This is my mock-up, but I want everything figured out from here. So I drew a line straight across there, and then I figured out, once I flipped it over, I figured out my spacing, top to bottom, left to right, and I'm going to make, I made little marks up here at the top, and with those in place, my baseline for my layout is right on the, the baseline, and the way I drew that on there, you can do it with a tape measure, the way I drew that is just with the square, both sides, or you could use a big T-square, you can do it any number of different ways, but now I know that that line is square from the bottom and from the sides, so now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make my marks in the corner, and I know now for my final artwork, which is going to be done on label stock with an inkjet printer, if my layout, my uh, final layout is the same size as this, I should be able to just lay it in place and tape it down and do my transfer. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go uh, use our inkjet printer and we're going to print out the layout exactly the same as this. I'm going to trim it down. I'm going to make exactly what I've done here on my mock-up. I'm going to do with my final uh, transfer image and then we're going to come back and we'll get this thing laid out. All right, so we've got these pieces almost completely put together. I messed up and I trimmed off a little bit more off of here than I wanted to. It really should come clear out to the end, but I've still got three corners that I can register, so I think I'm going to be okay there. But here's the thing, that roll-on tape that I used to stick the regular paper together, 
um, it doesn't work really well on this slick surface. So that's where I go now back to the scotch tape. And uh, what I do is like this one is still the only thing hold these three are in place these three here but the only one that's not completely in place is this one I've got one piece of tape there but again that would be a kind of a temporary hold so here's what I do I'm gonna take a pretty good sized piece and where this thing overlaps together the seam underneath is right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that underneath there and it sticks really well to the bottom side uh, the, the back side of uh, this label stock it sticks really well to that so that's gonna hold our pieces together so again, my overlap is here, and there's a seam right there. So if I push that down, now that's sticking on regular paper side, not the slick side. It will, it will hold a little bit on the slick side, but not near what it does on the paper side. So now, pretty much I've got, I've got it pretty much put together now. So I'm going to rotate it around. And we're going to see how this works. Oops, here's what I didn't do. Almost messed up. I need to very carefully, huh? You want to hold it up, then I'll draw the line? Or? I think I can do this. All I really need is my lines at the end of the, the paper. And this, this uh, label stock is fairly thin, so I should be able to see that from the other side. So that gives me my registration on that line. Oh boy. So here's what you want to be. See, I can see that line through there, and I can see the line through there. Now I just want to be really careful not put any pressure on that paper till I get it in place. So now my three, my three corners are pretty much registered up. Again, this is the piece that I cut off too short, but if I go with those other pieces and I pay attention to this line, to make sure that that is squared up. Do you want some math, math? Now I'm in pretty good shape. Yes, please. This is where I like the blue painter's tape for, uh, for taping this thing in place. Now what I normally do is just tape the whole top edge. Again, looking at this, making sure that's staying where it needs to be. One more piece that size, babe. Thank you. So now, that should be in place. Now I should be able to just rub this thing down. Um, I need to get my... Uh, yeah, I don't have my. Uh, we need to yeah. get you another one to keep one in. I know. Before. So what I use to do this, you can use a lot of different things. What I tend to use is the router bit depth gauge. I think I know where you can get one of those. Yeah, and um, so this is what I use. It's got a nice, not too sharp edge, but it's a nice um, defined edge, and I should be able to just rub that now. What I'm doing is I'm putting this edge toward me and I'm pushing away. And the thing about this label stock, again, you can see that, that image through there. That's what I like about this label stock is you can really see the image of where you want to, where you want to put pressure and, and rub. Now, the bad thing is that this stuff is much thinner than the the freezer paper so you have to be very careful that it doesn't tear on you and I almost always seem to tear it somehow what I'm trying to do now is trying to keep this more level with the I've still got a little bit of an edge but I'm trying to keep it more level like that I think if I'm more like that I'm more likely that that edge is going to uh, 
gonna tear that paper. That's my theory, anyway. We'll see. We'll see if that works out. Now, the other thing that you got to remember is we have here, we have two different, two thicknesses of paper on these overlaps. So that's where you need to rub a little bit more. But even if I had to just pencil that thing in, I'd probably be okay. Now, in the past, I have used like... Um, silicone spray that kind of thing on the slick side before I do my copies and that seems to do a little bit better job when, at least on the freezer paper when you're making your transfer I did not do that on here and I haven't done that for a while I don't like that going through my printer yeah the um and that's why we kind of one of the reasons we kind of discontinued that Well, this is always the nervous part. Now, what I want, what I like to do is if I need to put a little bit more direct pressure, sometimes I'll turn that thing over on its end. And that seems to give me a little bit more direct pressure where that thing is overlapped, where that image is overlapped. Can't believe I haven't uh, torn it yet. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. You just blew it. Yeah. Okay. The cool thing is, if it hasn't transferred good enough, I'll just lay it back down and, and transfer it where I need more. Mm. Wow, that looks good. Gosh, it didn't look green when, I, when we printed it out. Yeah, it did. I just don't remember. Yeah. So... Maybe on his head a little bit, I don't know. Up there? Yeah. Actually, it looks pretty darn good. That green shows up really good. It sure does. Yeah, it shows up better than, I think, better than black would have. And I think I need, that's a line, again, looking at my original artwork. That's just from where you put it together, though. Yeah, that straight line there. All right, I think, um, I think we'll look pretty good. I'm going to mess around with this a little bit more, guys, off, off camera. Just make sure I've got a good, uh, a good image, but it looks pretty darn good the way it is. But I'm going to do it a little bit more. Can you hold it up? I want to compare yeah. it, kind of put it side by side next to the, to the original. Yeah. It's pretty close. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a couple coats of clear, just the clear Rust-Oleum lacquer spray can on there just to seal this color in. I'm not worried about that, that being on there because it's all going to be sanded off anyway. But that is going to, uh, that's going to seal that green, that layout. That'll seal it, seal it in so that when I'm going across it with my hands, it won't rub off on the base plate or on my hand. Um, all right, that's it, guys. That's it for the layout here. We are now going to uh, pack up this show and head to California, and uh, we'll get into carving on this thing over in Ryan's shop. So um, it'll be a few seconds for you and about 24 hours for us. So we'll see you back here in a minute. Bye. Hey, guys. All right, we are in California. We're over at Ryan and Amy's house. And I brought this board with me. I want to do some of the carving, the initial carving on here. I want to do on this video. We're getting kind of close to the end of this video, but I want to get some carving done first. I'm going to work on the logo. I normally would work on the tiny letters first, but in this particular instance, being I brought my router from Arizona, but I did not bring a carving liner. I've got a profile bit in. I think I normally would do the small letters, but I'm going to do the big logo first which is, um, again, this is our artwork, and I'll always have a piece of artwork next to me, but I'm going to do the, the big uh, guy with the 
chisel. I don't know. He's got a hand plane. That's what that is. Uh, I'm going to do him first. Then um, probably uh, once we get back to Arizona, then I'll have a carving liner and I can do the lettering. So I'm going to switch this around. I'm going to swap it. Just go behind me. Say hi, Ryan. Hello. <laughs> That was English, Ryan. <laughs> and I am going to put on, I forgot my cheaters too, but Ryan had a pair of cheaters, kind of like an old uh, jeweler's thing. So I'm going to put that on. And uh, I've got the bit, the router Ryan, bit set. Black uh, button. Huh? Black button. It, it's draining, so it won't shut up. I've got the router bit set at about uh, 3 sixteenths. Oh, well, we got washing machine in the background. Oh, yeah. Well, all right, we're going to have router in the background here in a minute. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to pull this a little bit closer here. And, oh, by the way, this is all going to be outset. So here we go. Folks, so what I've done here, let me get that off. What I had to be careful with here is that because of the way the the layout went, you know, I have some lines in here that didn't turn up green, but it was because of the overlapping um, papers 
when I did the transfer. So this isn't really in the logo itself. That's why, again, it, it just is one more example of why you want to have the artwork right next to you. So, for instance, this line, this straight line, this straight line, and this these straight lines, it would have been really easy to get mixed up and carve that. But that's not truly part of the logo. That's just where the four sheets overlapped. Uh, and I could have colored those in. If you have an issue with that, you might just color those in to make sure that you don't, uh, you don't carve something that you don't want to. So anyway, um, this, uh, the other thing was that this maple is really hard. I'm going 3 16 at full depth, but I did pull it up slightly, just to adjust it slightly to get into some of these tight spots. Um, and this bit feels like it needs to be sharpened, but this, um, this maple is super hard, really hard. It's very consistent though. And that's, I don't mind hardwoods as long as they're consistent where it's hard all the way through. It's the ones that are soft, hard, soft, hard. Those are the ones that can really be a challenge. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up guys. We've done a whole bunch of stuff up to now. So we're going to move on to a second video. Hopefully, if all goes well, we'll get it done on the second video. So um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please email me directly, eric at makeawoodsign.com. Um, if you need any supplies, makeawoodsign.com. We're on Instagram every day, just about every day, uh, makeawoodsign. And... Uh, that is it. If you haven't subscribed, we'd love for you to subscribe. And um, as always, we love comments. We love um, interaction as much as you can interact. Click the little bell icon so you get notified when we do videos four times a week and maybe more. Anyway, uh, we love you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.